In this video, we're going to be looking at question three of the unit three sample paper for the IAS chemistry course from NXL. This question is looking at the organic substances. So we've got a little bit of information about chlorination, a little bit about oxidation and a little bit about the analysis side of it. So we've got a reaction sequence here involving compound F, which has the molecular formula C3H8O. And you can see that we've got three different reactions here. So we know that this is going to be an alcohol with that molecular formula. And given the fact that it can react with PCL5, this is how we test for alcohols. But when it reacts with PCL5, this is your nucleophilic substitution in order to make a chloroalkane. That chloroalkane can then undergo an elimination reaction and we make an alkene. And in reaction three, these are oxidizing agents. So this is going to be an oxidation and we will make either an aldehyde or a ketone. At this point, we don't know because we don't know enough about the particular alcohol we're using. We don't know, is it primary or is it secondary? What we do know is that it is not tertiary. The fact that it can undergo an oxidation means it is not tertiary. So in reaction A, we're getting misty fumes being formed and we want to identify it by name or by formula, what they are. And anytime you see the term misty fumes, it is always HCl or hydrogen chloride. Very important that you don't write hydrochloric acid. It is not the aqueous acid that is being formed here. It is the gaseous hydrogen chloride. And we can then deduce about compound F what we already know or what we've said when we've labelled our diagram that we have got the presence of an OH group telling us that this is pretty much an alcohol. That's how we test for an OH group is using PCL5. The infrared spectrum of this liquid F is also shown here and we can see right away this characteristic peak here for OH groups and we want to give the rate, wave number range of the absorption which confirms this. So you would look into your data book and look in the IR wave number section and for an OH group or an OH bond in an alcohol this is going to be from 3750 to 3200 wave numbers. So confirming that this is an alcohol. For part C, we're looking at gas H, the C3H6 that was formed in reaction number two. Well, this was in our elimination reaction and we're making this alkene and the functional group that was present was identified by shaking a sample with a few drops of bromine dissolved in a non-polar organic solvent. So that's basically our bromine water and our version of bromine water. And we want to look at the colour change. Well, we know that this is going to be from orange to colourless. Confirming what we already know from our reaction scheme there that this is an alkene. That's our test for unsaturation. Now we want to write an equation for the reaction. And there's two ways that you can write this out. You could either write it as C3H6 plus the Br2 to give us C3H6Br2. So just in the molecular formula. Or you can write it out as your structural formula, which would be CH3, CH, double bond, CH2 plus the bromine in this addition reaction. So we get our CH3, CH, Br, and CH2, Br. Either one would get you all of the mark there. No state symbols being required. For part D, we've got the oxidation being carried out by slowly adding the solution of acidified potassium dichromate liquid in a cooled flask and the flask was then set up for distillation and then gently heated and product J or either aldehyde or our ketone was then distilled directly out and we want to draw a diagram of the apparatus that is suitable for this distillation. Now I've pre-drawn this 
purely because it's much easier for me to draw on a piece of paper than it is to try and draw on my screen electronically here. But I just want to point out a couple of key things here. You're going to have this either round or pear-shaped flask that is going to contain your reaction mixture that will be either your with your oxidizing agent and your alcohol. We've got the thermometer at the top with the still head and we're showing that we've got heat happening as well. We then have the condenser, which is this part here. And because it is distillation, remember the condenser must be at an angle. It is not reflux, which is when it is straight up and down. And we've got two parts of the condenser in terms of the water and the water always goes in at the bottom and comes out the top. We then have it going down into a conical flask and that gives us our distillate that we get at the, the end. You get one mark for the round bottom or pear shaped flask plus the still head and the, the heat, one mark for the condenser, one mark for making sure the water is the right way around and that you have a suitable receiver. It can either be a flask or here you could use a beaker. If you have a gap before the condenser at this point, you will lose one mark. And if you have the apparatus all being completely sealed, you will also lose one mark. Now we want to look at what the possible structures could be for the isomers. And we know that it's going to be C3H6O. And if we've got the alcohol, we're either going to be baking propanal, which is the aldehyde, or propanone. And because it doesn't specify what type of structure that is, you can either have skeletal structure, um, structural formula, or displayed. I am going to draw displayed just to make it nice and clear. We're going to have our three carbons on each of our substances, but when it is the aldehyde, the carbonyl group is at the end, whereas when it is the ketone, the carbonyl group is in the centre. And now I'm going to add my six hydrogens all the way around, making it very clear that the hydrogen is bonded to the carbon. And those are your two possible isomers. One mark for each of them. Part E is now looking at the identity of that substance. So we know it's either propanol or propanone. And we can confirm this by spectroscopy and by chemical tests. The infrared spectrum of J has got absorbances at 2,716 and 2,893 wave numbers. And we want to identify the bond that is responsible for these absorbances. And when it comes to the bond, we're saying that it is a CH bond. So you, again, you would check in your data book in the IR table for this information, but we have to be specific that it is CHs in an aldehyde. And you will see that it says that in the data book, it's not just a CH, because that could be a CH in an alkane, an alkene, um, and any other sort of substance. So it has to be the CH in the aldehyde. For part two, we want to give a chemical test that will give that expected result and there are a couple of possible answers that you could do here to identify that this is an aldehyde. So we can use our failing solution, or you can say Benedict's, because both of them are very similar compounds. And that is going to give us a blue to a red precipitate. Very important that you must use the word precipitate if it is an aldehyde. You can also use Tollens reagent, that is also an accepted answer. And if it's Tollens reagent, it will give us a silver mirror. Remember, none of these reactions will be possible with a ketone. It would only act with an aldehyde. Or you can use acidified potassium dichromate, or K2Cr2O7, and that is going to go from orange to green. And all of these are positive tests for aldehydes. 
So now that we know that J is an aldehyde, we have now have to think about what the compound F, what that alcohol is actually going to be. And if we have an aldehyde, it means that it must have come from a primary alcohol. And we know that the compound had that formula of C3H8O, therefore this molecule is propan 1 ol so this is using your spectroscopy and some of your chemical tests in order to determine the different organic substances. So we've had the inorganic chemical test question. This is the organic question about adding in a little bit about how we actually carry out oxidations and a little bit about the practicals. It's a 14 mark question. It's quite a bulky question. It's only a 50 mark paper. If you have any questions on what we went through in this video, please feel free to leave a comment below and be sure to check out the playlist to see how we answer the other questions in this paper.